Hi, my <laughs> name's Catherine. I'm a store manager for Holland & Barrett. We're here today with Dr. Angela Sharma and we're talking about the menopause. Can you just tell me please what actually menopause is and what's it all about? Menopause, the term means the end of your periods. And uh, it, it's something that we say that you're in the menopause when you've not had a period for 12 months. We've heard from a lot of my customers and from myself that hot sweats are one of the symptoms of menopause, but can you actually tell us more? So there's a, a huge number of um, symptoms and anywhere, wherever you have estrogen receptors in your body, that's where you might feel the symptoms, but everybody's different. So they're gonna have different experiences. So some of the symptoms you might experience are brain fog or changes in your mood. Also, you might feel it more irritable. Um, you might notice hot flushes, which might be during the day or the night. Um, um, changes in your sleep as well, so waking up a lot more because of the hot flushes or waking up early in the morning. Um, some people feel joint pains and aches, like a body aching feeling. Um, also changes in your periods as well, so they could anything can happen to the periods. They could either be um, regular or irregular or they might have stopped or they might be lighter or heavier. But eventually when you get through the menopause, then it means your periods will have stopped completely. Um, also, the bladder, vulval, vaginal area and the pelvic floor have a huge number of receptors. And this is where people feel a lot of symptoms. So you might feel vaginal dryness, pain during intercourse, um, low libido. You might notice um, some loosening of, of the pelvic floor as well. So yeah, so quite a lot of symptoms, but everyone's different. So research shows, Angela, that 51% of women from ethnic backgrounds don't feel represented. That's really disappointing. Um, and, and that's a huge number of women, if you think about it, that don't feel that they're included in that menopause conversation or, or in the research. And, and it's badly needed in this area. Um, it, it's important because women from different ethnic backgrounds have different symptoms and experience menopause a little bit earlier. And also the length of their menopause or the symptoms that they have can sometimes be much more severe. So it's really important that we have research in this area um, to try and help these women. One of the main questions I get asked at work is how to control your weight during the menopause. It all goes back to the basics, um, which we say time and time again, that everybody knows. Mm. It's going back, looking at your diet, looking at what you're eating, being mindful about the choices that you make about your food and um, keeping those things out of your diet, like alcohol, sugar, you know, and, and huge portions and things like that. Um, and also then keeping a more kind of a Mediterranean diet. Um, so eating more oily fish, um, uh, more omega-3 in your diet, olive oil, nuts, seeds, avocados, that kind of thing. The other thing that you have to think about is exercise. Whenever I talk to my patients about exercise, it's about doing something often and frequently and being consistent with it. That's the key. So you can do anything and it, it could include housework or, you know, um, just walking. You know, you don't have to go to the gym and join a gym. But I try to get people to think about exercise in four different ways. So anything that helps with your cardiovascular fitness. So anything that makes your heart race. So that could be just walking, you know, um, or running or, or, or doing some kind of aerobics exercise. Or you can, uh, the next thing to think about is some kind of muscle strength training. So as we age, we start to lose muscle mass. So it's really important that you're working on that muscle. And also that helps with your bone density and helps improve your bone strength. And then the other two things that people forget about, which are really, really important, are flexibility and balance. And in terms of flexibility, things like yoga is brilliant at this time, or Pilates, things like that. And if you can't do that, then just rotating your joints or stretching your joints every day, any kind of stretching exercises that you can do really help. And again, it's small, but being consistent. And then for balance, it's again, it's yoga and Pilates and things like that. But if you can't, then just standing on one foot while you're brushing your teeth, sends those messages back to the brain every day where your body is in space and keeping your connections going for the balance. I use supplements mm -hmm. a lot. What would you need to yeah. support your body if you were supplementing? What I always like my patients to do is be taking a vitamin D supplement uh, every day. Also really thinking about calcium and calcium in their diet. And if you're someone who's vegan or doesn't have a lot of calcium in your diet, there are other ways to get it from green vegetables and, and other sources. But it's about being really vigilant. It's all about empowering women. So my one bit of advice for any woman would be to talk more. What would yours be? 
I think I'd agree with you definitely to talk about menopause, talk about the symptoms, share it with their friends, but also go and talk to a healthcare professional about it. And then my other thing is really, really importantly that you take care of your bones, taking care of your diet and exercise. It's just really, really important to focus on that. So Angela, thank you so much for today. We've really, really learned loads about menopause. Thank you.